Okay, uh, welcome back. Um, now, there's a very important section coming up, and because of that, we're going to do a review um, a review of the mathematics you learnt in Chapter 1 uh, regarding polynomials. Um, there's quite a bit there here in this, and um, it's very important. So we won't say anything about the factor theorem yet. Okay, so um, the first thing we're going to review is how to use place values for polynomial multiplication. Um, so you're familiar with multiplying 236 by 15 without a calculator. Um, these, these are units, these are tens, these are hundreds, and these are thousands, etc. Okay, well this is like an x10, x squared, 10 squared x cubed etc so w the, the place value multiplication technique that we already know is very useful for polynomial multiplication so rather than do it this way we'll do it with place value multiplication F for the very first time i'm going to leave the x squared the x the variables in there so that we'll be taking them out pretty quickly So you have minus 5 by 6 is minus 30. Then you have this, which is plus 15x. Then you have this, which is minus 10x squared. Okay, now we don't have any units for this multiplication because it's an x, so you put a 0 here. Then you have 6x. And then you have minus 3x squared. And finally, you have you've a unit... Uh, you have an x cubed uh, term that didn't appear at the beginning uh, in either of the um, the, the, num the expressions that are being multiplied. Okay, and you're getting 2x cubed. Okay, at this stage you can tot them up. You have 2x cubed minus 13x squared plus 21x minus 30. But we could... As I said, we're going to do it with the x's in and then with them out. We could delay with putting, populating the variables until the end. So we could write it at, as 2 minus 3, 6. And notice I'm leaving out plus signs. I'm only putting in negative signs. And 1, negative 5. So you have minus 30, 15, negative 10. Then you have a 0, because it is. And then you have a negative 3. Hold on. Then you have a 0, because it is. Then you have a 6. Then you have a negative 3. And then you have a 2. Now, as we're adding them, we may put the in the, ex the, uh, the x is to the various powers. Because then that'll be our final answer. That's how they work. 2, negative 30, and 21, negative 30. So let's practice some of the exercises from chapter 1 at sort of full speed. Okay, so I'm going to do this one. Now note, note how quick, how easy they are to do. 1, 2, 6. 1, 2. No carrying, so 12 is 12. Okay, and I have x cubed plus 4x squared plus 10x plus 12. So this one I leave down as an exercise for yourselves.
Okay. Now here we're going to end up with a quartic, which is a power of four. So we're going to multiply one minus three minus two by two minus four one. reason for that is this is x cubed sorry this is x squared so even when he's being multiplied by this constant which is what I, which is what I'm going to go to next he's right in here Now the most difficult thing is figuring out the highest powers, the degrees of both, and uh, adding the, the degrees, which is 2 plus 2 is 4. That tells you this is an x to the 4. And just keep descending. You put zeros in if there could, could there possibly be um, an empty column. It's rare. Oops, I was making a mistake there. Um, okay, you get the idea. And there's another one there for you to work on. Now, I'm not going to do this one exactly because it, it actually just reminds me of something far more important and it's the following we imagine three distinct roots a b and c okay and we're going to write down the mnemonic cubic based on these by multiplying them out so the corresponding factors are like this according to the null factor law. Okay, so because we're human, we can only multiply two things at a time. So we multiply those two together and we get x squared minus a plus bx plus ab. Okay. And we're going to multiply that by x minus c. Now I could strip away the x squares the x and the x's and use place value multiplication. But just in case I lose anybody, I'm going to go ahead with the multiplication with, with the x's in. So I'm going to multiply there. And now here. Right, the minus by minus cancel. And now here, and now we have zero here, and we're here. See the way he's he used a missing pair from these two. Uh, these two were there. It, it makes sort of uh, logical sense that the third one comes in. And now here here and finally this we design them to be to be monic meaning they start with x cubed so we have x cubed minus a plus b plus c now notice that's the sum of the roots so we had that for a quadratic for the x term minus the sum of the roots times x. Now we have x cubed minus the sum of the roots times x squared. And then we have probably the most unusual term, which is the sum of the two-way cross products. So let me just give you a visual on that. You have a, b, and c as, as roots, and then each pair has a product. 
and I call that a two-way cross product. And you sum the two-way cross products. In other words, leave one out at a time. Leave out the opposite. Leave out B, leave out C, and leave out A. And you get that times X. And finally, we have minus the product. So we're used to having the product of the roots. Just remember for, for a quadratic, it was x squared minus a plus bx plus ab. Because what these things do is they change sign every, every, every uh, new term as you drop. So it starts here, x cubed minus the sum plus the, cro the, pro the sum of cross products and then on to minus the product. So you're moving from sums to products with a bit of both in between. Okay, and we're this is review, and you're going to you know that that's a very very valuable um, tool to have. Okay, we go over an application of it. You have two, three, and seven as roots of a cubic, and you're asked to find the equation of the cubic. I'm going to lay them out. A triangle. I'm going to put those two-way cross products because I'm going to need them. Okay. In the middle, I'm going to write the final term. Okay, and just somewhere else, I'm going to write five and seven is twelve. Write it here. So this starts off as x cubed minus twelve x squared because the roots sum to twelve. Now the cross products sum to 24. Do they? No, they don't. That's the final 24, and it's negative because I'm going from negative to positive to negative, and we don't have any negative roots, so that's not a problem. So what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to add that and that, which is 20, and that, which is 41. So these are very, very powerful techniques I'm showing you which will allow us to do questions in, in a fraction of the normal time. Okay, now we're going on to learning about dividing, and I have a few tricks for you here too, or at least not so much tricks, but probably better ways than long division. We look at long division, but um, quicker ways than long division. So this has a de single degree of a difference. So the answer... In other words, there's a cubic, there's a degree 3 over degree 2. And so there's going to be a linear result. Okay, And our assumption, and it is an assumption, but we're going to justify it later, our assumption is that there's no remainder. The remainder is zero. I don't need that, but I'll just, just say this there. So if we're assuming that the remainder is zero and we're looking for a linear term, that gives us the x's. And this gives us the numbers. But we have to justify it. Now to justify it, you can just verify either of these. The easiest by far is to verify the linear. And it's coming about, remember this is the... This is the dividend, and this is the quotient. So if we multiply these two together, these two here, we get the top. So that just means doing minus 3x plus 8x. No, minus 3 minus 8. Minus 3 minus 8x. But there it is there, minus 11 and minus 3 minus 8. So it's perfect. Same thing when you're doing quadratic over a linear. The answer has to be x plus 3. And you can verify it. 6x take away 1 is 5. The answer has to be 2x plus 4 
and you can verify it with 4 take 6 is minus 2, etc. And that's pure silly there, you could half all of them. And your 6x take 2x is indeed 4x. Okay, we'll do synthetic division as part of the main lesson. Um, and the remainder theorem, which leads us on into the factors theorem. We'll just do the first one here from um, section 2.9. And yes, indeed. So we have probably three strategies here. But if you've read the start of the book, you know the factor theorem. And I'm going to do this as a, in the next lesson. I'm going to spend a bit, of, good bit of time talking about the factor theorem. But just for now, suffice to say that if 2x minus 3 is a factor, the theorem works both ways, then 3 over 2 is a root. So the direct and the expected proof of this is to put 3 over 2 in for x. In other words, sort of name this f of x and say f of 3 over 2 and the, the, the result will be you get 0. So you'll get 2 times. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the calculations here. Um, 3 cubed is 27 and 2 cubed is 8 minus 5 9 over 4 or minus There's much quicker ways of doing this, but we're going to, and, and, and you can do do it those other ways, which I'm going to be showing you too. But they're kind of, it's good for you right now to be applying the factor theorem. That turns out to be equal to zero. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.